what I'm hearing now is uh, like uh, enlightened uh, talk, uh, speech of enlightened being. May I ask you a direct question? Are you enlightened? <laughs> this, is, this is always, um, I, I spent um, probably the first 15 years of my practice, um, although I've always been you know, attracted to literally all the world's traditions, and I've written about all mm -hmm. of them. So I've had to know most of them and practice most of them. And I'm usually practicing some version of one or the other of them. But, but my, my main practices uh, for the first 15 years was Zen. Mm -hmm. And then the second 15 years was Tibetan Buddhism, particularly Dzogchen. Until and, now, or? Uh, no, huh? And uh, to some extent, Mahamudra. Um, it's um, in, in Zen, Are You Enlightened? What was always taken as a trick. Um, because you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you say yes, then you clearly, <laughs> no individual <Yes>. is enlightened. <laughs> But if you say no, then you're just an ignoramus. You're an idiot. Um, so um, all I can do is dilute it down and say that um, it, um, my first Zen teacher was Katagiri Roshi, who was one of the main successors to Suzuki Roshi, a San Francisco Zen center, very famous yeah, fellow. Yeah. Um, and Katagiri, um, he used to kind of do a Midwest circuit after Suzuki died. And so he had set up several um, groups. And he would just travel from one to the other, to the other, to the other, uh, and, and um, answer questions, and then do sashins. And um, it was in one of those that I had my first oh, awakening. Um, and which was really extraordinary. Um, and then I just sort of continued um, doing that and deepening my Zen. Was it before or after you start writing books? It was um, right about in the middle. Um, when I started, I had um, um, a few peak experiences and a kind of an understanding of what it was. Um, and I was also uh, um, just a, a bright boy. So um, what I was in particular interested in was drawing together a lot of these different disciplines. And I did that in my first book, which is called The Spectrum of Consciousness, and I was 23 years old at that time. And I, I then ended up doing um, almost a book a year since. Um, the one time that I stopped was about a five-year, six-year period with Treya. Um, but then I went right back. And then after doing Grace and Grit, which I promised her I would do, um, I did Sex, Ecology, Spirituality. So clearly, you know, things were stacking up on my mind during that five-year period. <laughs> And they all just came, you know, pouring out. Um, and that, that marked um, a real shift in the capacity of, of at least this version of Integral to be, you know, fairly comprehensive. Um, and so uh, and it was also when it really started to take off in a lot of different um, areas. Um, so um, all, I mean... Almost all I can say is um, enlightened enough. <laughs> if you say more than that, you're just a braggart and almost certainly wrong. Hmm. And if you say less than that, then you're worthless, you know. Yeah. And you're also not telling the truth. I mean, people, people do have. Uh, genuine understandings. Yeah. 
And, and Thank make, you for these confessions. Yeah. And I uh, want to explain that uh, for me, like maybe for many other Russian readers and uh, readers uh, all over the uh, world, uh, was very important to read in one taste uh, kind uh, your experience of awakening when you came to yeah. New York. Uh, it's yeah. many pages, very encouraging. Oh, yeah. it happens with Ken, so might be it's possible for yeah. me and for the, all yeah. of us. And also in um, eye to eye, there yeah. is a chapter, a whole chapter about uh, non-dual tradition. Yeah and how it can be experienced. <laughs> and it was like first-hand experience when you read it. Yeah. Yeah, since it's impossible to find words to shape all this in such powerful way. Yeah. Yeah, I th I, um, I, it's one of the things that I'm uh, pleased about is that um, many people get their first sort of Ken show or, or little bitty Satori or peak experience mm -hmm. from the pointing out instructions that I give for witnessing or non-dual and they'll actually get get a hit of it and again you know just a little bitty one but that in itself can you know show them what's there and show them how really important it is mm -hmm. and so then I say now you know find a teacher and practice and make it solid <laughs> and uh, you often uh, describe yourself uh, uh, not as a not as um, a teacher but as a pandit exactly what i had um found after i did my first book when i was 23 mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm happy to say that it was actually um quite successful and made um a pretty big buzz um, around the world um, and there were very positive things said about it and um, um, virtually all the reviews were really um, you know just outlandishly positive I mean I was really uh, fortunate to see that uh, happen and so I was invited you know to teach and do seminars and so on sort of all over the place and so the first year I did that. And what I found at the end of that year, even though I loved doing it, was that I, 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 I kept having ideas. But I, I really didn't have the time to write them down. Because once you actually go out publicly and sort of make yourself present, then you get overwhelmed with follow-up. Mm -hmm. I mean, all sorts of people are contacting you yeah, and yeah. want to come over and talk to you, want you to be their teacher, want you to come to the next conference, want you to... And I was just kind of, you know, overwhelmed. And they even project on you all the neurotic expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. And they... So I finally, at the end of about the first year of, of doing mm -hmm. um, public conferences and seminars and teaching and so on I finally said um, you know I, I can either teach what I wrote yesterday or I can write something new and unfortunately I still have new ideas now I, I expect that it, that won't last long that um, you know just a few years I'll, I'll have said everything I have to say and then I'm going to write bad novels and bad poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do footnotes. <laughs> and so, but strangely, it just got worse and more ideas and more ideas. And so I went from, in the decade of the 30s, doing sort of a book a year. And then in the decades of my 40s, I did sort of two books a year. And then uh, recently, it, and on several occasions, it gotten up to three books, and mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to say they're, they're I think they're still fairly good. So, um, although I did work in one bad novel, so I'm I'm, I'm proud of that, Boomeritis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just published in Russian. <laughs> 
Um, there actually, I think, are some important uh, things in there. But um, so, so I'm, I'm still just kind of riding away. And um, it, it, because of that, um, I also had started to notice what was happening to friends that set themselves up as actual teachers or gurus. Mm. Um, mm. Most of them came to very bad ends. Mm. And it was pretty clear to me that America still just wasn't ready for anybody, certainly that claimed to be a guru, but even somebody that stood up and said, I am a spiritual teacher. That was just asking to be target practice. You were yeah. just yeah. going to get killed for the claim. And so I saw that, and I also saw my own desire to write and so on. So I, I've made several statements, and I've kept making them ever since, saying, look, I'm not a guru, I'm a pandit. A pandit in, the, you know, in India um, is somebody, well, a guru is somebody who takes on students and actually works with their karma. A real guru makes a commitment to eat your karma, mm -hmm. to actually work with you in working you closer to a free and clear state that can be enlightened. And I think it's a very wonderful job. I think it's very important, it's very mm -hmm. difficult, mm -hmm. and there's a great, great need for it. A pandit is a scholar practitioner. It's somebody who knows a tradition well and practices it. And some pandits are more enlightened than gurus. So some of the really great pandits have been Nagarjuna and Plotinus and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, that's not what distinguishes pandit and guru. What distinguishes them is that guru has made a promise to work with your karma, to directly take it on. It's very much like a psychotherapy session. Whereas a pandit doesn't, it says, my primary responsibility is to write the most accurate, correct, innovative statement about a tradition that I possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's to take whatever scholastic capacities I have and use them to, to help you understand it as best you can. And that's just what I felt closer to, is a panda. And so, I have kind of retained um, that stance. It's only, I, I made a vow not to attend conferences. At that time, I was 24, 25. And for the next almost 25 years, I did four interviews. Hmm. And that was it. Hmm. And these are people that just broke down sobbing hysterically and begged me. <laughs> or I, I just wouldn't even have... <laughs> It's easy to yeah. <laughs> give an interview. <laughs> <laughs> But they were friends, and I was mm. so, so, so horrible for them. I said, okay, okay. Mm. Um, but that was it, four. And mm. um, so uh, it, a lot of people, I developed kind of an urban legend about me that I was this hermit and I never saw anybody, and I lived mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. and I read like 10 books a day, and you know, all, all these mm -hmm. funny... Mm -hmm. um, and you don't sleep at all, for example. Yeah. Um, I actually had a very active social life. Most of the people in the field um, had gotten to know me by then, mm -hmm. and most of them came to visit. You know, we had wonderful times, and most of my still longtime friends to this day Mm -hmm. are people I met when I was 25. Mm -hmm. And they came to see me because of the first book. So I had, I had a wonderful social life, and it was active, and I saw plenty of people. I just didn't go to conferences. 
I didn't do workshops. I, didn't, uh, I just worked on the writing, and that was it. And so on balance, I feel pretty good about that. Um, when we started Integral Institute, I did go out a bit and started things like Integral Naked, which were dialogues with well-known people, and I've now actually done over 500 of those in, in the last mm -hmm. 10 years, uh, one every week, 50 weeks, yeah. 10 years, yeah. 500. Um, yeah. And so that's been very uh, satisfying, and I hope useful. Um, and, uh, and then occasionally, um, we would do seminars and workshops, and I would, I would show up there. And that was a big step for me. But I did it very carefully, and I was very sure not to do more than that. So I still basically didn't go to other conferences. This was just to help Integral Institute and, and so on. Uh, and so I did that. Um, and um, that, that's been, I, I sort of have this meter in the back of my head, mm -hmm. which tells me when I'm stepping over the line and going out too far. So I turned down Oprah, for example, mm -hmm. because that would have just way over the line. Do you have opera here? Good opera? I, I, Do you have good opera here? Uh, Oprah Winfrey, not opera. Ah, yeah, ah. Oprah Winfrey. I see. Um, and so, um, uh, although I did do a dialogue with her, Dr. Oz, kind of a small thing. Um, so I've, I've still kept um, a pretty careful uh, eye on, on this. And still, for whatever reason, um, I still have original ideas. Um, how beneficial they'll actually be, I don't know. Uh, we will find out. Um, but it's clearly something that speaks to me. And it, it's hard for me to see somebody not agreeing that, you know, big pictures and inclusive approaches are better.